the, the room was designed by Dennis Erskine. I, I gave him a wish list, and they were things that I knew from having seen other home theaters uh, and having seen uh, traditional uh, commercial theaters um, that I wanted to incorporate into the room. And that wish list, uh, literally, I, I think there were 15 points or so from it, and Dennis put every one of them into the design and gave me a couple of designs that incorporate every single thing in the wish list. And uh, as an example, uh, I wanted to have curved rows. Uh, in my previous room, the rows were straight, and I know that when you would sit in seats and you sit on toward the outside, you're not right in the middle, that you naturally turn your body toward the center of the screen. So if the row isn't, isn't turned, you still try to do it anyway. And so the curved seating compensates for that. So when you're sitting in these seats in curved rows, um, you're, you're already pointed naturally to the center of the screen. So it's a lot more comfortable on the outside, I've noticed. And I, uh, I asked Dennis to have uh, the speakers in columns. I wanted everything hidden. I didn't want to have any of the equipment visible in the room. I didn't want that part of it to be the focal point of the room at all the architectural features I did want uh, to be the focal point. So again, because um, I'm a bit of a stickler on the uh, video, I wanted there not to be a lot of reflective uh, surfaces um, that would ruin the image. And so the trim that we have um, along the upper part of the room is high enough that it does not do that. But yet it adds something to the room so it doesn't look just like a laboratory. The same with the sconces, relatively simple um, as Art Deco was. It has a strong look to it. Uh, that's why we, I wanted the, the sconces to be on the columns and to be real simple sconces that, that went well with the other trim. The builder actually did a great job. He brought in trim and then he put several different kinds of trim up for me with a few nails and let us look at it painted. And in fact, the, the trim at the top is, is weather flashing painted gold uh, for windows, exterior, and uh, to get something that had that metal look to it, uh, which is part of the, again, part of the Art Deco uh, style. But everything's relatively simple in the room. It's not overly ornate, which uh, for me is the look I was going for. And like I said, Dennis, I gave him my wish list of uh, tiered seating, curved rows, um, entering the room from the back and stepping down into the room instead of, uh, instead of stepping up onto platforms and everything hidden. Um, and he did a fantastic job coming up with the design that you see here. And then a local builder uh, implemented the design. The walls are covered with Guilford of Maine fabric. And that allows us to hide the um, acoustic uh, treatments that are behind the fabric. And half being reflective, half being absorptive, for overall function, but that's all hidden being covered by fabric. In addition to a, a really beautiful architectural feature, they hide um, speakers and the surrounds uh, are within the columns. And so there's a surround speaker here and then in the lower part of each of these columns and the back columns are small subwoofers. Um, all of them are triad in wall uh, surrounds with triad in-wall subwoofers. And they augment the overall um, function of the large subwoofers that are behind the screen. The columns um, also uh, hide the fact that the Guilford of Main fabric has a certain width. So um, the columns actually hide the seams. So the, um, the seams, the, the fabric itself only has a certain length and you would have to get a seam. So this way, there's a column um, that makes it so there doesn't have to be any seams along the walls. And they actually cover where the staple lines are. And each of these columns is actually um, uh, more or less a dummy. That is, that this is a, um, a three-sided box that slides over another column that actually has a speaker mounted within it. And uh, so it's uh, quite a nice, and the, the builder uh, came up with that idea and it makes it easy to access a speaker if you ever had to get into it. You'd also, all you have to do is take the trim off and that slides right off. The stage is uh, something that, uh, uh, very similar to the, the curtains, is, is part of a look of the room that uh, 
gives it more of a traditional feel as a, uh, one of the Art Deco style theaters. So um, that's the primary reason um, architecturally that we wanted to have uh, the stage. It has a function too because it's filled with uh, sand to give a base uh, for the uh, subwoofers, uh, for the energy of the subwoofers. And it's part of all of uh, Dennis Erskine's designs for his theaters. He always recommends that as part of the design. This is on the upstairs. Um, and so when we had the room renovated uh, with the theater that you see now, um, the architect that originally uh, designed the upstairs of the house assured us that the um, added several tons of weight that are inside that stage with the sand uh, was not going to be a problem at all. And so we have a matching soffit uh, which follows the same radius as the stage um, for uh, a consistent look to the room. And I think it really does um, add a lot to the look.